why Mikey Garcia at 140, really a weight that you haven't fought at in like in a couple of years? You know, it's, it's time to get the chip off my shoulder, man. You know, uh, I heard they got me at 5-1 five, five and one odds, and it's like they really not giving me a chance. But they'll sit here and say Mayweather got – I mean, McGregor got a chance to beat Floyd. You know, so it really got me feeling kind of shitty, but it's okay. You know, there are a number of people say, Adrian Brown's not going to make 140. <sighs> he's going to do what he's done in the past. He's not going to make the weight. I mean, I didn't have a reason to make the weight. You know, my my last couple of fights, it was like, okay, we're going to fight 40. But then it's like, y'all going to pay me the same if we fight 43 or 44? Let's do it. You know, I was talking with uh, some members of your inner circle, and they told me they thought this was a real crossroads fight, they said, for you. In your opinion, because of everything you've been through, the ups, the downs, do you see this as like a career-defining or a crossroads fight for your Yes, career? I do. Um, this is a not only a cross-defining moment for me in my career, but it's it's a it's a big fight for boxing. And I think this fight will go in history. And, you know, I think after this fight, I will go into superstar. And, and talk to me about why you feel and you actually acknowledge that this is a crossroads fight for you. Is it because the, the ups and downs in the career? What do you think? Why? It's, it isn't about the ups and downs. It, it, it's about um, me fighting a, another fighter with a, a nice following himself. Um, uh, he's, he's on the pound for pound list. I was on the pound for pound list. So, you know, I think this is go going to be a, a life changing moment for me in boxing. And um, I'm, t I'm not taking it for granted. I'm going to take it serious and, and do what I got to do to get my victory. You talked about taking it seriously. And one thing you discussed is you said, look, I'm going back to Colorado Springs to train. Tell me why. Why did you make that decision to do that? Because that's where some of my best performance came from. Even in the Madonna fight, you know, uh, I was in so much shape and I was so strong that I was able to still finish the fight strong and, and I could have won that fight, you know. You know, uh, but you know, um, Madonna's retired. Of course I want the rematch, but he's retired. He's a nice friend of mine. You know, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for the success he's had in boxing. But right now my main focus is Mikey Garcia, July 29th, and um, I'm ready to put on a great performance. I'm happy you mentioned Marcos Madonna. He told Mikey Garcia, Adrian Broner was the biggest puncher and probably the toughest fight I've had, even more so than Floyd. And part of the reason why I'm not fighting anymore because I took a lot of punishment in that fight, even though I won that fight. Do you think from a psychological standpoint that stays with Mikey Garcia when it comes to whether or not I'm going to stand in front of this guy and try to slug it out with him? Of course, man. I, he's not going to stand in front of me. Nobody do. Everybody say they're going to stand in front of me, but they, but they don't. Even... Like even if you look at the the Sean Porter fight, he didn't he didn't stand in front of me and fight me how he fought Paulie or um, a Keith Thurman. He didn't fight me like that. They didn't. They, he was bouncing around and doing all that rugged bull crap. He he didn't come straight forward and try to bully through me. You know, um, Adrian Granados, another one. He didn't fight me the way he fought Amir Ma. He didn't do it. You know, so when. When guys, you know, look at the Madonna fight and they're like, oh, we, we're we going to pressure him. You know, once they feel my power, they change their mind. Do you take offense when people say that? Because a number of people say, all you got to do is pressure Adrian Broner, you beat him. And that's, that's just funny to me. It's real funny. But, you know, um, like I said, I will be uh, turning, turning another page, going into another chapter of, of my boxing career. And my two losses uh. I just I beat myself. In the Madonna fight, I fought with my heart instead of my 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 brain, my smarts. In the in the Sean Porter fight, it was so much more. <laughs> Shit, I mean, man, Sean Sean him no. That one still sticks with you. It really don't stick with me. It's just a mistake I won't ever. You know, it's just a learning experience. I'm happy it happened. Because it's something that I know I can't do again. You know, I, I ain't no more cutting corners. Well, getting back to, to Mikey Garcia, a number of people said. If Sean, I'll fuck Sean Porter up. If Sean Porter want to fight, I'll fuck him up, man. 
if Kenny and his daddy want to fight, I, I, I will, I will fuck him. I will stop this, this Mickey fight and, and go to forty seven and fuck him up, man. And, and tell me why Mikey Garcia is Mickey Mouse. Oh, Mickey, oh, we're gonna put him back in his clubhouse, man. We're gonna put him back in his clubhouse, man. Come inside, it's funny time. Mickey Mouse clubhouse. Um, a number of people see this as a 50, 50 fight, but are you surprised as you talked about the beginning? That but he listen, okay. Fans? See, you know, boxing. Yeah. Let's put Mikey Garcia in the ring with all my opponents and then give me his whole 36. I guarantee I'm 36 and 0 with 36 knockouts. Who knows what his record will be? Point blank period. Come on, man. He's doing, he still, he still got to do, I done already, I'm a four-time world champion in four different weight classes. He got some catching up to do. I done already been champion at 30 and 35. I done beat the best at 30 and 35. When I was that weight, they didn't want to fight me. When I was 30, they didn't want to fight me. Well, he was only 26. We could have, we could have met at 28. I was weighing in at 28. We could have fought. They didn't want to fight me. When I was 35, they didn't want to meet me at 33 or 30. They ain't want to fight me. Now y'all want to fight me? Cause I done had a couple, couple bad days. All right, that's cool. Do you get a sense that maybe they're looking at you that maybe the way you looked at Sean Porter and said, "Oh yeah, this is this is probably the non-discipline past past the prime, Adrian Broner." Yep, I, I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell y'all what's gonna happen. This was gonna happen. I'ma fuck him up. I'm messing around to stop him. They just gonna go to go back to 35 like nothing happened. And you know what the boxing world gonna do? They're gonna embrace him. And then they're gonna make excuses like, oh, he was naturally the bigger guy, he was naturally the faster guy, he had the most talent. He was supposed to do that. At the end of the day, they're gonna finagle some way and find a way to downplay my victories. Which Adrian Broner and tell us what happens July 29th. At first, I was the problem. Then I became the K-Man, and that's the one that everybody was scared of. No one called out the K-Man. And then, once my name got more, like, bigger and more money came, I became AB, about billions. And that's when all the shenanigans started happening. For this fight, you know, um, I took it back to when I was the K-Man, and, um, yeah, I can assure you the cam in his back. I just can't wait. I just can't wait to prove everybody wrong, you know. And Mikey Garcia, he's definitely gonna be one that I prove wrong. And after the fight, I can promise you he will say that I'm the best fighter he ever fought in his life. Sounds like the best Adrian Broner we've seen in a long time is gonna be there July 29th. Yes, sir. Best of luck. Thank you.